Hey, welcome to Q&A with Jay. I'm excited about today's question because it's the kind of thing that, uh, one, I used to not be very good at. And frankly, I'm still working at sometimes, but it has huge impact with regards to how your business grows over time and how you can know uh, that you're gonna be successful. Even more importantly, it's how your team members can know that they're being successful in their roles. One of the worst things uh, that can happen in a company is when leadership thinks an individual on the team is not doing a good job, but they think they're doing a great job. You have a serious problem if that's the scenario because everything's out of sync. But usually if that's true, it's because expectations haven't been set. Here's the question for today. Uh, how do you measure your team's performance um, and is it important to do this? Second part, yes, it's important. Let's talk about how we actually measure our team's performance. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different for each role, but I'll give you a couple of things that we do. Number one, every single role inside of our company has a single sheet called a KRA. And that KRA stands for Key Result Area. Um, key Result Areas, maybe, depending on how many areas that they cover. And this is something, an idea that I uh, took from Entree Leadership, which is a book by Dave Ramsey. Great resource if you've not read that. And what this document does is it basically outlines, hey, here's the primary responsibilities of this role, and here's what success looks like. Often in the here's what success looks like, there's some kind of a metric or a measurable that that person um, is going to be evaluated against. In some cases, it might be a percentage of client retention, if they're an account manager or a project manager. It might be a, um, a, uh, a number, a net promoter score or something of their clients that they help manage uh, to know how well uh, the clients perceive uh, the work that's happening. Because often it doesn't matter whether the work's good or bad, it matters how the client feels about it. So measuring that can be important. It might be just something like number of billable hours on a weekly basis. Those are all measurable things to judge performance on an individual basis. So we would have those things outlined in that KRA, the Key Result Areas document, and it uh, creates clarity to be reviewed uh, on a quarterly basis with their direct report to go, hey, here's what your role says. Oh, where do you feel like you're at in this? And that person needs to go through that and go, well, I think I'm doing great. I'd, I'd give all this a green, or I'd give these three things a green, these two are probably a yellow, and this one thing is a red. All right, great, well, with the red thing, what do we need to do to make that a green? With the yellow ones, what do we need to make those a green? With the green ones, what do we need to do to make sure they stay green? Then the, the person that's reviewing that person may have some different feedback and may think, well, you said this is a green, but here's some concerns that I have. It creates clarity and it creates a single point of review. So that's one thing that we do with regards to measuring performance uh, that can have a big impact and ultimately it creates um, clarity of expectations. And I always say that when it comes to expectations, expectations are the number one reason that relationships, relationships, I can't talk, get destroyed. Uh, and I don't care whether this is a marriage relationship, a friend relationship, um, a peer relationship, or in this case, an employer-employee relationship. And what happens is I expect this and you expect that, and those things are too far apart and we have a problem. But communication is the bridge that connects expectations. And so that KRA document helps create that clarity of communication so that everybody's on the same page. The second thing that we do, which, which has been really helpful in evaluating our uh, team success on an ongoing basis, is all of our team members on a biannual basis, so twice a year, are reviewed against our core values. Now, some of them are on the wall that are behind me right now. We have six core values that are drawn up on a wall, and we have those defined in a company document uh, that talks about what does that core value look like on a day-to-day -day basis. Then what happens is each team member, uh, uh, their peers and their uh, managers and the rest of the team review them against those six core values. And what they do is they say, hey, this person usually abides by this core value, they sometimes abide by this core value, or they rarely abide by this core value. And in our case, since we have six of them, we want uh, at least four to be usually, uh, we want no more than two to be sometimes, and we really don't want any of the core values to be ranked as a rarely. Now, if they're marked as a rarely, that's something that um, we need to have a discussion on. We're not just gonna immediately let somebody go because of that, but it's a great talking point to go back and review. So our entire team is reviewed by their core values 
and by our company's core values, that is not their core values, but hopefully the same, and uh, their individual KRA. And if you have those two pieces together, you're gonna have a great way to track performance, both on an actual achievement basis and on a, as an actual team member of who they are. Because you might have somebody who's absolutely crushing the performance aspect, but is not aligned at all with some of the core values. And to me, that's a bigger problem than somebody who's struggling a little bit on the performance side, but is perfectly aligned on the core values side. Uh, if somebody's struggling on the performance side, they probably just need some education, some training, some encouragement, whatever, to help get them in the right place. If they're struggling on the core values side, those things are a lot harder to change sometimes. So those are two big things uh, that we do here at Design Extensions to help track performance. And it is really important. I haven't always done it um, because sometimes it can be awkward to have to give somebody a review that's negative. Um, but if everybody is on the same page and we all have the mindset of, hey, this is for our improvement, everybody reviews mine too. Uh, and I get an anonymous feedback of what how aligned I am with the core values. And there have been multiple times where I go back and read something and I go, Yep, that's something I need to work on. So um, try those things out. KRAs, which you can get more information about those from Entree Leadership by Dave Ramsey. And the, the core value evaluation we actually took from a book called Traction by Gino Wickman, and they actually call it the People Analyzer. So those two tools are really valuable as it relates to uh, evaluating the performance of your team. I hope that's been helpful. If you have other ideas about how you evaluate your team's performance, I'd love for you to put those in the comments. Or if you have other questions, leave those, and I'll be happy to answer them on a future episode. Until then, I'll see you soon.